This video shows you what nobody is talking about with LaMelo Ball. Hornets owner Michael Jordan's legacy as an executive now rests on the shoulders of a kid from Chino Hills, California. From drafting Kwame Brown, Kwame Brown, and Adam Morrison, to getting Charlotte just two playoff appearances last decade, MJ's list of questionable front office moves are endless. But stay tuned to see a prediction of if LaMelo can make the Hornets legit and every connection Ball's got to the GOAT on the court but a struggling owner in the front office in Michael Jordan. If you're already subscribed, welcome back to D-Flow Hoops. If you're new here and a basketball fan interested in NBA rankings, predictions, and stories, welcome aboard. You came to the right place. Please subscribe and click notifications so you get notified every time I post new content, which is at least twice a week. Big Man Earns last video shout out for answering the question by saying he's most excited to see Trey Young next year. I definitely agree. The top five on the Speaks board get rewards at the end of the year and the board resets in 2021. The question for next video shout out is coming up. Appreciate every answer. The history between the Ball family and now the owner Lamelo's playing under and Michael Jordan goes back to early 2017 when LeVar went on ESPN's first take, and here's what went down. We talk about the GOAT here, the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan, and you running your mouth talking about you gonna be the one-on-one. -on -one. Why would you say something so blasphemous? In my heyday, blasphemous. he would need help. Really? He too really? small. His name is big, y'all like, like five, 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 five game, he good. One-on-one, -on -one, I'm undefeated, never lost. Okay. Keep watching because later I'll show you Lamelo's hilarious reaction to his dad potentially playing one-on-one -on -one with Jordan, but LeVar might have sounded crazy on first take back then, but it's that type of relentless confidence that LeVar's instilled in both Lonzo and LaMelo that have allowed them to become top three draft picks in the NBA. But you never could have predicted that three and a half years after that first take interview, that LeVar's youngest son, LaMelo, could either make or break how MJ's remembered as an NBA executive. Since Jordan has been heavily involved in the basketball decision making, the Hornets have lost 58.4% of their games. Yes, as an owner, he has far less direct effect on basketball games on a night to night basis than a star player does or any player for that matter. But still, the Hornets are 464 and 651 since Jordan was brought in. That's a large sample size and not a good one. He won six NBA championship rings as a player with Chicago in the 1990s, as well as the 1982 NCAA championship at UNC. Winning consumes him. As a player, it defined him. As an owner, Jordan has never got Charlotte to the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Charlotte's most statistically notable season came when the then named Bobcats went 7-59 in 2011-12, which is by winning percentage the worst record in NBA history. Before Jordan became the Hornets owner in 2010 though, as the president of basketball operations in Washington in 2001, he made Kwame Brown the first player ever drafted out of high school, taking Kwame with the first overall pick. Brown has since become a laughing stock in the NBA, and Jordan has been brought down because of it. But this next mistake was far worse than that. At least Kwame was expected to be good in the NBA. But as the GM in Charlotte 14 years ago, MJ knew going into the 2006 draft that Adam Morrison wasn't even close to being the best player left at third overall. Regardless of the reasoning behind the pick, Michael still taking Adam with the third overall selection will be forever looked at as a colossal mistake. Morrison was a bust from the word go, and anyone with half a brain could have watched him in college and figured out that the way he played wasn't going to lead him to NBA success. However, while you could argue that his failure so far as an executive wasn't included in the last dance, Jordan's most recent selection in LaMelo Ball has a chance to change the course of Jordan's reputation as an executive because with a rising Devontae Graham, Miles Bridges, and PJ Washington already having proved themselves as legit young players, the Charlotte Hornets just need one star to come in and help those talents mesh. You can bet Jordan and basketball fans in Charlotte are praying that LaMelo Ball provides that star power the Hornets are so desperately craving. The fact that LaMelo just played in the NBL overseas and now has one year of pro experience under his belt before his rookie NBA season, that's a major positive. With the Hornets' existing guard lineup of Terry Rozier and Devontae Graham, clearly Charlotte's strength is their backcourt. 
and LaMelo's ability to play off ball and create for himself off the dribble, that's going to allow Charlotte to use his talent in multiple ways. Given his elite passing ability, LaMelo should be the primary ball handler with Graham and Rozier both very capable of catching and shooting three-point shots next to him. In the 12 games he played in his lone season with the Illawarra Hawks in Australia's NBL, he shot 25% from behind the arc. That's got to improve. So placing shooting guards around him generates more open shots that'll allow his confidence and rhythm to develop. Just like his shot, Ball's defense could improve to reach the NBA level, but the deficit in his physical strength is also going to be a weakness for him, something his brother Lonzo also dealt with in his rookie season. But that can be made up for with effort and high basketball IQ, which LaMelo has. Now for my prediction of how good Ball will become and his reaction to LeVar and MJ's potential 1v1 in a hilarious clip you can't miss. Since the Hornets rejoined the league in 2004, They've won 40 or more games just three times, and those seasons were the only three times they qualified for the playoffs. However, with Ball, Charlotte's drafted a lengthy 19-year-old 6'7 point guard who can make things happen with his playmaking and general flashiness. This third overall pick for Charlotte was finally a good selection for MJ. Melo's a piece that significantly increases Charlotte's chances at playoff contention, and by giving Ball the green light to shoot and play a ton of minutes, I think that'll let Ball grow and develop into Charlotte's next superstar, one they can build around to possibly contend for a title in the coming years. Maybe they won't make the playoffs this year due to LaMelo's lack of a three-point shot and weak defense, but while after this past free agency, the Hornets aren't necessarily built to maximize LaMelo's talents, I think they'll be active during the league's midseason trade deadline to better equip themselves for the right skill set of players around their rookie. Gordon Hayward might have been overpaid by Jordan to sign with Charlotte, but he's an efficient forward who can vibe off Melo in pick and pops. The 30-year-old season wing in Gordon was an all-star as recently as 2017. He's a much-needed playoff-tested veteran presence in a locker room where a majority of the players are under 25 and haven't played in the postseason. Around the new duo of Hayward and LaMelo, the Hornets have a chance to build a team that can make winning and making the playoffs a Hornets ritual and turn around Jordan's reputation in the front office. Whether that's by holding on to and developing a few of their young players in Graham, Bridges, and Washington, or by trading for better players in the near future, I think they can make that happen. But here's LaMelo's hilarious reaction to a potential one-on-one -on -one matchup between his dad and Jordan. When your dad is challenged, uh... I have a feeling it's yeah. Bad. I'm going to ask you, how would, would you like to see that happen and uh, how would that turn out? Uh, like I said, I, I don't think it's going to happen and then I think we know how it would turn out to be honest, so uh, I don't really know too much. But I mean that is my pops and it's my boss, so I'm on both sides now, you feel me? Very well delivered and simply put answer from LaMelo, but the question for next video shout out is, either what do you think LaMelo's potential is? Or what do you think Michael Jordan's next move for Charlotte is? Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops. Links are in the description for both those platforms where you can keep up with the channel and learn about more about the man behind the microphone. That's at DFlowHoops. As always, this was DFlow, and I'll see you next video.